Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Trent Talks. I'm super excited. Got a fun, uh, a fun guest today, and we get to do it from his office up here in St. Pete, Florida. Uh, so I'm super excited to have Dan Henry with me. The uh, you're gonna love. It. I'm gonna do it to you anyway. The course creation guru, right uh, here. I hate that word. <laughs> I hate the guru word. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> but no, I'm super excited to have Dan here. Um, this is gonna be a really fun episode. Uh, one of the biggest reasons is because I want to. A lot of people, a lot of people know your background. Some don't. We're gonna touch yeah. briefly on the background, but I also think it's gonna be really cool to get your perspective because, and obviously you know this. Did the whole online learning, the knowledge background, or the knowledge business right now mm -hmm. is insanely huge. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of people doing it the right way, and there's a whole hell of a lot of people doing it the wrong way. Correct. Um, yeah. So, I'm gonna ask you first, like, what got you? Because your background. I know, uh, well, you, you can explain your background real quick. When you first got started in Facebook ads and kind of how you transitioned into your first course, which was Facebook ads for entrepreneurs. Yeah, that was that was years ago. Well, that wasn't that long ago. Um, well, Feels I had, like it. A lot, I had a lot to, of work. <laughs> I had to change the title from Facebook ads for entrepreneurs to funnels and ads for entrepreneurs because um, – I got a notice from Facebook for using their trademark name, so I had to I had to stop that. And then I changed, and then I uh, redid it and called it Thirty Day Agency, um, which is what it currently is now. What's called currently called Thirty Day okay. Agency. That that particular course, which right. which was how to start your own local marketing agency. Now you, so, you know, so you started out though because I know you were running night, you were running ads for your own nightclubs, stuff like that. Yeah, so that's that. So that's how I actually got started. I owned this, so I. I I, I was walking down the street one day in this strip mall, right? Yeah. And there was this bar, and I was like, oh, I'll go into this bar and have a drink. That was back when I still really drank. But, um, I, you know, and I go, and I try to go in, and the door's locked, and nobody's in there. It was like this huge bar. And I'm like, what the hell? So I go to the leasing office uh, next door, and I'm like, what's the deal with this bar? Because it said, like, leasing office. And they said, right. oh, we had, they didn't pay the rent. So we locked the doors, kicked them out. I said, wait, so I, I peered in there. There's liquor, there's equipment, there's everything. There's jukebox. Like, it's fully loaded. It's, it's fully ready loaded. to roll. Yeah. And I was like, well, what are you doing with all that stuff? And they're like, well, we're keeping it because they defaulted on their rent. And they did The next not. tenant may. Yeah. yeah. And so I said, well, how much are you renting it for? Right. And it's just like a 4,000 square foot club. And so she's like, um, 2,500 a month. I said, will you do it for two grand a month? I'll give you a check right now. Cause at, at the time I had a little bit of money from, um, I had an affiliate blog. I, I learned SEO and, yeah. then, and then SEO like completely just went away when they did it. What was it? The penguin update? Yeah, penguin. I got totally bombed. Yeah. Out. So all my income, I had like, I had like a hundred grand left and I spent all of it on the bar. Like literally when I That's opened funny. the bar, the day I opened the bar, so I you literally like, just decided you're walking by. This is not, not, not planning, not anything you're like, Hey, that's a cool space. Yeah, I think I, I kind of want like, that space. Yeah, I mean, I I do weird shit like that. <laughs> like, I just like yeah. I I'm known for ready fire aim. Sometimes, yeah, I know it's, yeah. yeah, it happens. My father always says he's like, you never know. He calls me Junior. He's like, you never know what Junior's gonna do. You just don't know. He's just <laughs> unpredictable. But um, I I decided to do that, and I quickly realized that oh shit. I got to learn how to advertise for this business. How do I fill it? Now I'm paying yeah, for it. How do it, I right. fill it? You know, because I, I spent it all on remodeling, right? So, yeah. and, and I made the club look way better. I've seen some photos. Look, I saw the photos you've yeah, had you before. Yeah, you saw the before and, and, and after. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was, yeah, that's how I got my hands to have, like, that gave me eczema. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> but so I was like, well, I got to fill this shit. So I had to learn Facebook ads because I tried, I tried print. I tried all that stuff. Right. Didn't work. And then when I started running Facebook ads, and what this is actually what I did. Um, so I ran an ad to like, because I figure you know the, if females are coming, mm -hmm. men come, right? Like you don't even have to. We naturally that we we follow the women. Yeah, you don't have to promote to the men. Right. Promote to the women. So in in this particular industry, so I ran this ad. I said twenty dollars, all you can drink, including top shelf, which is nobody does that. That's crazy. Right. And so. I ran the ad and got him to an event page, promoted. And, and it was what a target I, specifically to women. Women in that area. That's yeah. Right. Um, and so we got like 200 people there the first night. <laughs> well, I didn't make a single penny because we did 20, you know, but what you I may did, have actually lost the money in the whole liquor I think concept. I, I think I broke even. Right. Um, but okay. what, what, what ended up happening was I had a camera, one of those 
DSLR cameras. And I went around and I got footage of the entire bar super nice. packed. Then I took that footage, I edited it into Facebook ads. Nice. I ran the ads for the next year. And every time somebody saw an ad, they're like, well, this place is hopping. Cause it's just crazy slammed. The whole right. place is busy. Yeah. Yeah. And of course it was busy that night. And then we made tons of money. And I actually, my, my goal for that bar was to sell it, like flip it. And everybody told me I was crazy. Everybody said, that's not going to work. They were like, oh, you know, um, this is a funny thing. They said in Florida, 99% of bars fail their first year, which is true. That is true and I yeah. said, well, that means 99% of my competition sucks. That's how I viewed it. So Perspect uh, perspective. perspective is huge. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so the same thing. Oh, don't create a Facebook ads course. Oh, don't create it. Well, you know, well, so, okay. So you, I know then after that, you started running Facebook ads for some other people. Yeah. So what happened was I, I sold the bar and I made like a crazy, I, it worked. Like I, I flipped the bar right? and, and I made like, a six figure profit from it, which is crazy to do with, with bars. And especially, so, especially you said profit. That's the thing. It's not a sales price. You made profit. Yeah, on that. Profit. Yeah. Most people I know because I remember the capital even. gains tax. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, so what I did was I was like, all right, well, I don't want to own a bar anymore. I got like super fat and shit from drinking. Like I kept drinking this, uh, Kahlua and Bailey's, oh, Lord, you know? Mercy. Yeah. And it got me, oh man, I gained so much weight. It was terrible. So as soon as I sold the bar, I started losing weight. I got healthy. I stopped. I was smoking at the time. I stopped smoking and I was like, well, I don't want to do this anymore. So right. I was like, well, I know how to promote local businesses. And during that time, a few of my friends who owned other local businesses were like, Hey, can you help me out? Yeah. Hell, yeah. And I did. And, right. and it worked. So I was like, well, shit. I was like, I'll do this. You know? Yeah. So I, I approached local businesses and I was like, Hey, listen, I had this bar and I had some friends that had businesses. I can get you leads. I can get you more customers. Let me, let me show you that I can do it. Right. So I ran like a little trial for them, showed them I could do it and landed them as clients. And within a month I made 10 grand in client nice. retention. Within three months I was up to like 20 grand a month. So I did that nice for, money. yeah. So I did that for a while. And then I started having people that were trying to build their agencies, reach out to me and be like, Hey, can you help me? So I started selling coaching calls. Right. Right. And I was like, well, shit, I'm making more money selling coaching calls. Cause like I was selling a coaching call for like, like a little package of coaching calls for like two grand. Right. Cause, you, cause most people, when they start out coaching, you're somewhere 150, 250 an hour when yeah, you're doing yeah, coaching. Yeah. And you, if you sell a block, yeah. Right. And I nice was like, check. man, I was like, I'm running ads for clients, which is great. It's super lucrative. Um, but I had been doing it for a while and I really had my own unique take on it. And, you know, it's a method that other people weren't doing. Right. And so I was, I started coaching and I was like, man, I'm making the same or more coaching, but I don't have to deal with clients. I'm like, this is interesting. My time is different. My yes. time is different. But then I did that for a few months and then I was like, well, wait a minute. Now I'm on the phone all day. Right. I'm making now, more money. Now you're still doing, you're still trading time for money. Still trading time for money. Yeah. That's why I always say coaches are not entrepreneurs. They're the farthest thing from an you're entrepreneur. You're still, you're still an employee. They're self-employed. You're, you're still an trained. entrepreneur. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit what you, like you can call yourself an entrepreneur to make yourself feel better so that like when you go home, you can like give yourself a pep talk. But an entrepreneur is somebody that does not work in their business. They work on their business. That's an entrepreneur. Yeah. So if you are doing the work, you are not an entrepreneur. You are self-employed. That's why we have the word self-employed. That's why that word fucking exists. Right. Okay. If it didn't exist. You may still have an entrepreneur's mindset, but you're not an entrepreneur No, you don't yet. have an entrepreneur's mindset. You don't think an so? An entrepreneur's mindset. Even is if you're trying to get to that point? Well, yes. If it's a means to that. Like if your goal, well, okay. And I'll give you, a, so I did every job in my nightclub. Yeah on purpose. So I knew how it was done. So that when right. I trained people to do it, I knew. So in that respect, yes, then it is an entrepreneurial mindset. But if you don't have that vision, but if, you're, if you're three, four, five years into it and yeah. you're still doing the work, you're not a fucking you're entrepreneur. You're self-employed. I'm with you. You're the guy that has the van that does uh handyman work. You're just on the internet. You're not an entrepreneur. Fair that is enough. not a fucking entrepreneur. That is somebody who works for themselves. Okay. That's it. Okay. So it, I thought, I thought, I need to be an, a real entrepreneur. Like, how can I scale this without me? How can I make more money? How can I help more people? Because I'll tell you, when you see somebody that was struggling, mm -hmm. and you remember when you were struggling. Is the desire to help. And, th and this could be weight loss. It could be, it could be anything. Right. And then you teach them, whether you charge them or not. And then you see them have success. Mm -hmm. The feeling you get from that is insane. Like, it, it's just so cool 
to see somebody else achieve something and you like taught them that. Well, a side note, I think this is really cool. I've mentioned this in numerous episodes. I've talked to Dave Woodward about it Mm -hmm. and and some other different people. And it's really interesting that I see all the time. People think there's a difference between making money and being altruistic. And there really isn't because we all have to make money to pay our bills. Oh yeah. At the same time, if we can be altruistic and still make money, because the whole, the whole reason you're starting courses, it's not just about making money. Yeah. You want to make money. Yeah. But it's about, I have a service that I know people can, that people can use to execute and change their life for the better. That can change their positioning where they are. Right. Well, here's the thing. Look, to pretend that everybody doesn't want to be rich. We all know that's bullshit. Everybody wants to be wealthy. Everybody wants to be rich. Right. But if you get rich doing something you're not passionate about, you're not going to be happy. If you right. get rich doing something you're passionate about, don't fucking tell me you're not going to be happy. You're happy Money does right. not make you happy, but it sure shit solves a lot of problems that make you unhappy. Right. Okay. No, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. You're right. Money doesn't buy happiness, no. but it fixes a lot of problems. My father, though, my father always said, uh, he goes, um, they say money doesn't buy happiness. He's got, got a cigar in his mouth. They say money doesn't <laughs> buy happiness. <sighs> I say, try me. Okay. Yeah. He always <laughs> says that. But um, the, the thing about it is, is that money helps you create memories, right? Like right. everybody always says that every day we're dying. Every day we get older, our skin gets older, right. we're dying. But I don't see it that way. I see as some people are dying, but some people are living. So if you like, do you have kids? Yeah. Two. Okay. Where does the last uh, place you took them that like a theme park or something? Uh, it's been a while. I remember uh, Disney was the last place we took them. Wow. Do they still talk about it? No, they were little. They were little. <laughs> well, do you still do you still remember? <laughs> I still remember every okay? bit of like, it. Yeah, was I, it a great memory? It was fantastic. Okay, now that memory, right. that moment, that experience is what makes life life. That's yeah. what living is. Let me ask you something. When you went into that park, what did they ask for you before you could get in? That's for money. Money. Right. Right. I'm like, money is the currency of freedom. Yeah, and that's the funny thing. I I tell people all the time, money is actually a tool. Yeah. Money doesn't. It's how do you any. swing the hammer. It's money, not the hammer. Exactly. Yeah. Money is something you're going to make more. You're going to spend more. You're going to get more. Right. Money is strictly a tool. How you are able to use it is what is the. It opens doors for you to be able to, like you say, live life and experience life. Yes. So yes. we have to make money, but like you said, if you can be passionate and enjoy it, and you can get that satisfaction from helping people while you're making money, it's a game. Well, the thing is, you'll make more money if you do it that way. Right. Like that's why because people I, see the genuine nature of you enjoying yeah. it. Like I have zero fucking respect for the majority of these funnel hackers that go out there and copy somebody's course or just don't have any passion for what they're teaching, and they're like, "Oh, let me throw a funnel together and just hack this guy, hack that guy." You know why it's called funnel hacking? Because you're a fucking hack if you do it. Okay, you're a fucking hack. <laughs> all right. Like I'll tell you right now that I did not funnel hack anybody. What I did was, well, I did a lot of things, but one thing I did was very, very effective, didn't buy surveys. My funnel was not always so amazing. I would run a certain amount of people through my funnel, and then I'd send out a didn't buy survey. Be like, hey, tell me why you didn't buy. I'd get all these responses, and then based off the, because you got to understand something. People do not. See, it's interesting, because I I always thought, and I, I, in fairness, I've never run a buy survey. Mm-hmm. Um, my mentality with that was always like, well, I'm going to send it out. But people really, if, if they're not buying from you and they're moving on, they're not going to respond. No, 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 no. You have to frame it right. So I don't say fill out the student buy survey. I say, hey, this is your chance to tell me off. I want your opinion. Everybody wants to be heard, right? Everybody wants their opinion. Now, yeah. you could offer an incentive, but that's too much bullshit. Just say, I want your opinion. This is your chance to tell me off, right? Right. And what happens is over time, you can redo your webinar, you can redo your funnel, and you can refine it. My, I'm a big believer in refinement. So you get a lot of responses then from the tell me off. I have email. over 3,000 responses to my didn't buy survey Fantastic. each time. Interesting. Yeah. And then I look at it and then I improve the next round. You, you, you realize the different objections or things yeah. that you're and not addressing. Yeah. And that's not funnel concerns. hacking. I no, mean, it's the concerns that they have. Yeah. It's just communication, is yeah. all it is. And I, I'm not against funnel hacking or mod, but most people don't do it right. You're against bad funnel hackers. Yes, yeah. bad funnel hackers. But that's 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
Yeah, and that shit doesn't even matter. Oh my god, if I could right. sit people in a room and tell them all the things that don't matter, we'd be here for weeks. Okay, <laughs> I'd be like, here's this huge list. All you right, know, well, okay. On that point, because you because you, you've been doing a lot of funnels specifically, especially for knowledge and knowledge business yeah. and learning business. What are the biggest mistakes you see in funnels? Worrying about the funnel. It's not about the funnel. It's about the messaging. It's about the messaging and the offer, right? The funnel has some fucking fuck all to do with it. Fuck all. <laughs> not just nothing. Fuck all. Okay? Has nothing to do with it. Literally. Zero. Okay? What color button it is, your headline, that shit that – see, there's a difference between a funnel not working and optimizing a funnel. A funnel – you doesn't matter what you do to a funnel – that's not working. Right. If it's not working, it will never work. Now you can do things to a funnel that's already working to make it work better, but that's completely different. That's a, that's a big point because a lot of people they'll have a funnel that crashes and burns, and they're just like, "Oh, I just got to optimize it." No, you can't optimize shit. When's the last time you polished a turd? You can't polish a turd. You can polish a diamond. You can't polish a turd. Yeah. Okay. No matter what, that turd is still going to smell like shit. Period. Right? Like your offer has it's to be good. It's It's just. I think that's a concept that people miss a lot. All right. Would you like me to demonstrate it? So let's go What for do it. you sell? Uh, I run an agency. Okay. So that's what you do right now. Yeah. Okay. So, and is it an ad agency? Yeah. Oh, it's an ad agency. Do, do an ad agency. Okay, cool. Um, so if you were going to sell an info product, because we're, we're talking about info products. This is where um, I'm headed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, when I sold a course, mm -hmm. I realized I could make infinite amounts of money and not have to be there. I mean, we made a million dollars in five months, and then we. And then, and by the way, for the for, to say this, that was your very first product as well. That was the very first info course that you sold, correct? No, no. I tried an info course on affiliate marketing, and I did it all wrong. I okay? didn't know that. And it sold like twelve copies. It was terrible. Interesting. And then, and that's when I, I realized that if you build, see, like you cannot build a course and then sell it. That's stupid. I know you, you're very big on that, and I heard I, that's it's an uncommon theme. But that's something that you've done with all of your all the people I, that I, I know always that sell it before I build courses. it. So they I sell it first as a coaching offer, then I transition it to a course, and I do that for not only to make sure it sells because if it doesn't sell, then you don't have to do it, but also to make sure it's good, right? You don't know if your course is going to be good. You have no fucking idea, right. and to think you do, you're being a pretentious bastard. You're okay, just, you're, you're really just guessing. You're guessing what right. you do, what you do. The market will tell you if it's you good. Coach, or not. you see. Like, just like didn't buy surveys, I do the same thing with my students. I find out what they didn't understand, and then I adjust it so that they understand it. So by the time I get done with a coaching offer, not only did I make some money, but I made it to where new people that come in, they just get it because I already figured out what this first batch of people didn't get. I adjusted it. I make sure they understood right. it. So when I release it as a static agree, product. Whether it's an evergreen funnel yeah, or whatever it right. is. And my, my thing, my big thing is you have to make a good product. The problem is there's too many shit courses out there. I really focus on the product because if the product is good, your marketing will sing. Well, I think that's one of the biggest things is from my knowledge of what you do with sold out courses that sets you that sets you apart is you yeah. are huge on, I mean, the only person I can think that did it and she doesn't really do in courses anymore was Julie said the same thing. Mm. Is you guys both, you will sell the course first. Yeah. You get people into you sell the course first using uh, the coach the coaching method where beta coaching beta coaching thank yeah. you yeah where people come into a beta group and they go through the live coaching and everything else and that way you know whether people like it whether they yeah. don't like it you also know whether someone's going to sign up if you go through a live beta yeah. coaching program and no one signs up well, and now now and now you no go back and right but now you can go back and fix it right right so in sold out courses we have a systematic process for this. You go through beta. We have like spreadsheets that we give people. Like they literally can do a variety of exercises with their beta students, fill out the spreadsheets as they go, mm -hmm. and then take that data and use it to improve their course, improve their marketing. Right. It's a systemized scientific process to making a great course that sells like crazy. Okay, period. And that's why my students make so much fucking money is because yeah. they follow the system. Well, I don't want to put something out because this is, you, you, I know you've heard this. And uh, hopefully you don't throw me off of this. So you've heard people say all the time, well, oh, well, this is just core people teaching courses on selling courses. But I think the one thing that stands out mm -hmm. is you've done the other route before. Yeah, I think that's I the made, part people I've forget. Made, so you've made millions of dollars with a course that had nothing with to do with an informational yeah. course. 
that so, just was about information and about helping them grow their right. agency, their business. Right. So when you when someone comes to you and they say, oh, well, Dan's just doing, he's he's creating a course about courses. Well, yes, because I've of the I've only done like a million dollars through that dollars. one course. Exactly. Nine million came through a course that had nothing to do with that. You, Look, you'll I can't, like this comparison. I can't fix stupid. Not, it's not, it's not <laughs> quite, you can't do stupid. Can't, can't fix Look, stupid. I always say, there's two things I don't mess with. I don't mess with drunks. I don't mess with stupid people. You can't do anything with either one of them. Yeah, correct. But you'll like this comparison. So, like, for example, you look at Tony Robbins. He's not quite there yet. You're getting, you know, you'll get there. I don't know if I want to get yet. there. That's too big. No, but you know what I mean? But, like, yeah. look, if someone's going to look at Tony, Tony is a person who you would be able to look at, hence the, the KVB thing they did, um, where you can say, okay, Tony can teach courses on courses. Tony's created tons of courses. Or Tony can teach mm -hmm. courses on events. Because that's all sure. Tony does is travel around and do events. He's had tons of success. You've had tons of success creating courses. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural fit. And I think that people just have this mentality they have to get over. Well, I'm buying a course to learn about courses. Yes, you are, because you're learning from someone who's being successful doing courses. Right. Well, the thing that's different about sold out courses is, and man, I've spent so much work on this. It takes you all the way from what should my course be about to literally dealing with a course business at scale, refunds, pro, uh, disputes, dealing with your merchant account. Like it is everything. There's I was that. Gonna say, cause there's a lot of that stuff that people don't get either. When you yeah. get up, you, you have merchant accounts that have issues because we go, we go through that, the whole thing. Like, like it, it, and it's actually not a course. It's a coaching program. Um, but some people think sold out courses is a course. It's a coaching program. It's not a course. Fair I mean, enough. there are courses in it, but, Fair, fair, it's a fair course. point. No, fair I mean, point. It's, a, yeah. it's a coaching program. So the thing is, like, we have people in it that just started, and we have people in it that are already at a quarter million dollars a month and looking to scale up. Right. Well, and those people, a lot of times, they go into my mastermind, but they, they'll, they'll usually buy SOC first. But there's different things you deal with at different levels, okay? Mm -hmm. I've already dealt with all that shit. Right. You know? like <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like we see, quarter million dollar a month, you're like, sure, yeah, been there, done that. Yeah, I was doing that years ago right you know so when you come we did to a those... million in february did you really yeah nice. we well we collected 731 in cash 731,000 in cash and with total revenue was over a million with the commitments and payment plans payment plans like so yeah. just to be i know everybody likes to say they made a million dollars in cash when they made it in revenue right or not so at you guys, all you guys but... collected what did you say seven we collected seven hundred and thirty-one thousand. So you did you did three quarters of a million in actual payments <laughs> in cash in cash, yeah. and, and, then there, you, and then it was like one point one yeah. or something. But see, that's 1. the kind 2. of thing that people got to realize is when you buy from someone who knows what they're doing, what you're really paying for is it's that trade we talk about a time. You can spend mm -hmm. years and years and years and years or trying to learn yeah. yourself, or you can. Oh, pay I've been trying to do this shit since I was like sixteen years old. Right. Yeah. And, and I think people, uh, and that's the you know that's a good point. I like that. We'll segue into that right there because I think that's something people forget. They see like from where you are now and they say, oh, well, you know, Dan, he was, he, you know, he, he made a million dollars in five months in the first course. <laughs> so I expect my first course, even though I'm just new to the marketing industry online, I barely have run my agency or uh, I've never run a course or I have no information on it, but I expect that I'll make a million dollars in five months. They don't see the fact that you've been doing this now. So like you said, since you yeah. were 16, that you've run multiple businesses that, I, I mean, you know I, how I got into online marketing? You want to hear this fucked up story? This is the most <laughs> fucked up shit you'll ever hear in your life. Is this before the selling water bottles to make pay bills? Oh, yeah. Because I quit for years. Okay. Okay. So I'm on Craigslist one day and this dude posted this thing and he's like, this is fucked up. This is super fucked up. He posts, I'm young. I'm like 17 years old. I'm actually, maybe I was 18. And he, he's like, hey, we're uh, hiring chat operators. You can make all this money doing chat on Yahoo. And I'm like, what? what the fuck? Yeah. So I apply. So what it ended up being was you go into these Yahoo chat rooms. This was years ago. You pretend to be a girl <laughs> and you get guys to sign up for cam sites and then you get an affiliate commission. Oh my gosh. And I was like totally broke. Didn't know, like I, I could barely pay my freaking rent. And I was like, is this like, I thought it was a scam. And right, right. so I did it and they were paying like 50 bucks per sale. And I was, and like, I felt weird the whole time doing it. Like it's, <laughs> it's super weird, but it's, you're like, this is kind of sketchy, but yeah. you, you reach a spot where like, I, I need to be able to have a place to stay. Right. So I then found out through some research that they were just like, they were doing arbitrage, right? Like I, I went to the site and saw they had an affiliate program. They were paying like 150 per sale. I'm like, shit, I'm doing, I can do the same thing and get 150. So they were, they were taking it, selling yeah. it to you, getting So I went and signed ah. up for an affiliate program 
I made $800 in one night. I got the check and then they canceled the affiliate account because they figured out what we were doing. And it was at that moment that I realized two things. Number one, there is a shit ton of money to be made online. Yes. And number two, you have to do it ethically because if you don't, it will not last. And right. I've never been about things that don't last because it's just a moment that right. it's a momentary thing. You put it, you, it's funny, it's interesting you say, because you put a lot of time and effort into something mm -hmm. for it to vanish right away. Yeah. Like that, it's just. That's what happens when you're You don't want to have to go, when you're yeah. right, when you're on, you don't want to have to go right back to square yeah. zero and start over mm -hmm. again. But I didn't, I didn't, didn't know, right I, didn't right, know you didn't know at the time. I didn't know how to do any of this. So I didn't really go back. I didn't, so then I went and delivered pizza for like seven years and I would search things. I would look things up. I'd buy products. It was I'd, kind of always there. Yeah. Oh, I bought products. I bought traffic this and that, and I bought all the old shit, and it never worked because I, it was a combination of the courses not fully explaining things to where I fully understood right. it, mindset, all that stuff. That's why in my courses, I make sure to be – like the very first – module and everything i sell is mm -hmm. a mindset course i basically say listen this is not easy no mindset course you tell you do more pre-framing then so i basically say hey guess what you bought this course you think you're going to be rich right no you got to work hard you're going to get in here right. you're going to feel overwhelmed so so it's correcting the false beliefs that they have coming right, in that i'm right. just gonna make tons of money doing nothing right 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 so right. i i say like for instance you go to the gym right you lift weights mm -hmm. what happens the next day you're sore right. well do you say well this hurts. I'm not going to do it I'm anymore. Done. I quit. Yeah. No. Well, just like learning something. People go, oh, well, I tried the course, but I was overwhelmed. Who, who fucking who? Or the yeah. first time I did it, I did. You know, or the first time I didn't, I didn't work. Like, I know, just yeah. quick note. People knock Russell for his one funnel away. Everybody is one funnel away. Yeah. But it doesn't say how many you're going to do that are going to bomb. I didn't. I don't pay attention to what people but knock you get what for, I'm saying, but, though. I mean, whatever. They, they People knock everybody that oh, is of course. successful, you know. Russell, especially me, I mean, shit. Yeah. So, so I, my thing is, I say, like, listen, you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, that means you're learning. If you don't feel overwhelmed, you're not learning shit. Then you're not, yeah. Right? Like, do you think I got this from not being overwhelmed? No. Well, I mean, like, that's, a, that's another huge point. Like, people don't realize you're not even on social media anymore. No. The only Facebook account you have is your business account. Yeah, I shut down my You have the business account. page. You have no personal no, I account. Have, I don't, yeah, I, and I'm more profitable for right. it. Right. But that's the thing I think that a lot of people, because we're talking about it before we even got on the show, is that you're really you're very good at staying hyper focused. Yeah. Well, you were saying some shit. What well, you were naming a bunch of platforms I didn't even know what they were. It was, right. And like, they're just like normal, like like we use for like, example. Are you on this? Or are you on that? I'm like no. Yeah. Like we're, we're joking on just social media stuff, like little. And it's funny though because it makes me. I'm like, Ugh. didn't you say you were on Grinder? <laughs> <laughs> He's lying, baby. He's lying. <laughs> Happily married. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, like we mentioned, I think it was TikTok. I, you know, I don't know what that is. I'll sit on the toilet sometime, be honest, and just kind of I have scroll. No idea what it's TikTok a little funny is. videos. No. Never heard of it. So, but yeah. my point being is that you stay hyper focused in the fact that you don't know any of these. You don't even. I think it's amazing what I see that you do from a, a standpoint of like we got Christian in the back here doing video. Mm -hmm. like you're like, I don't want to have anything to do. The, from what I'm gathering from you, I don't have anything to do with stuff that's not making me money currently. I will find someone else who can do that. Excellent. Yeah. And then I'm not going to touch it again. Yeah. You see, I spend my time setting up processes that can be run by other Do you people. do time studies? Time studies? Where you look at you. I mean, not, probably not. Maybe not officially. Because uh, you, you seem like you're uh, kind of like me. I don't I have do a time studies bit of squirrel. because it takes too much time to do time studies. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just, you know, like, I, I, I mean, so, I, like, I don't want to study how much time I spend on social media. I just won't go on social media. Fair enough. Like if I'm well, on I mean social like, media, I'm well, I mean like processes that you do throughout the day to help you realize, okay, well, I can be, no, I can I'm get too, rid of this I'm too artistic to be that scientific. Okay. That's more of like a Sam Evans thing yeah. where he's just like. Well, it's really funny though. I love him though. He's you, you have a little bit of like, like me, like I, I have my little bit of ADD that kicks in from time to time. Yeah. And where I'll be doing squirrel and you just kind of like looking out there. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the one thing that helped you be super, you're super focused. And so when you're able to go through that and snorting Adderall, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've never taken it before, but I, I, I don't know. I keep, people keep telling I hear, me, I hear a lot it. of success with it though. Yeah. People keep telling me to take it. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Coffee works for me. Yeah. That's all I do. Yeah. Um, but anyway, being like the fact that like you went from very quick in a very quick period of time, you went from having FAFE mm -hmm. to going from, you went from that and now you have lead out, which we haven't talked about either. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, that's because I kept seeing people struggling with the number one most important thing in running an agency, and that's client follow-up, holding clients mm -hmm. accountable. So I'm like, well, fuck, I'll just create a software to fix this. And now it's selling like crazy because right. it just fixes the damn problem. But my point being is you went very in a very, I would say probably less than a year, you had you just had FAFE, and then you went, you had lead out, and now you got SOC, and then you've gone through and redone FAFE and rebranded it as 30-day agency. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to get done in a 12 month period. Well, you know what it is, honestly? Um, and now we have sold out courses, which is right. That's a, yeah, which I barely hey, I stole that acronym. Yeah. I know you use SOC. Yeah. I call so we, 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 I don't promote it that much because I'm still finishing up version two of it, and okay. we're actually going to be like, I decided like we're adding all this new stuff to it. And I, I want to make it like the MBA for selling digital products, like literally. So we only have two sales reps right now. So our calendar is like constantly booked, right? And, um, we like i'm like i just trained a coach because like i i actually do the calls and sold out courses do you? Okay, yes. I didn't know that. and then i i just got done training a coach that knows the system like the back of her hand to do the second call so like i don't want to sell too much of it right now and have like a million people on the calls because you know? then then you're going to get overwhelmed yeah, right and so eventually now. like we're gonna we're also adding we're gonna be at a youtube buy a youtube media buying call um because we have a, we, in sold out courses we have an entire youtube ads course like just one really thing. yeah oh okay. dude it's it's when people buy this program they're like holy fuck that it's like way more so it really is more than just because on the outside looking at because obviously yeah. we've had this conversation I, I haven't purchased it um on the <clears throat> on the outside <laughs> looking in it, it looks like it's a lot about just building the course so it really is that's above, like one module <laughs> it really is way way above and beyond that it's it yeah. handles everything from the mindset the traffic building the dude, course everything from mindset and building a great course that, how to make your slot dude i have a whole fucking lesson on how to structure your slides so people pay attention to them so they retain the information all the way to how to deal with refunds charge well, i was gonna say that's the ads, part that i would never YouTube think ads. about when i'm thinking about a course is never thinking about the aspect of well how do i handle that volume how do i handle scale yeah. oh dude we're adding, how do a, I, we're adding a health how do i not uh, lose my uh my money merchant we're adding a health module because my health like i i hired a personal trainer got on a certain diet certain workout regimen it's really helped my productivity and like we're gonna add, dude it's way more comprehensive than you could possibly imagine and as soon as i get done with the the version two right um and add the the additional coaches we're gonna double the price like i'm gonna make it a one two three four five um five figure <clears throat> product nice yeah so well i think it's cool well, I'm almost it's done. interesting though be, being the fact that you stay that busy you do a very you seem to do a very good job managing your time because I know you've got you've got the young, you yep. got Bruce. Mm -hmm. He's what about a year old one. now? Yep. Yeah. One. And so, how do you balance that? Um, it's really about. Is it more being focused when you're here and not it's, being distracted? Yeah, it's about being yeah because like you have to turn when somebody thing distracts you or someone distracts you, it takes at minimum twenty minutes to regain focus. So if every hour you get distracted twice, you're literally not focused at all. So you have so you've got three different things that you right. did for 20 minutes each. Right. Yeah. So you have to. So what I do is I block everything off and like, for instance, I can get something done in 60 minutes focus that would take me eight hours unfocused. So the trick is just literally telling people to fuck off. You turn everything off. Yeah. Like I literally do not answer phone. Like if, if you call my phone right now, Christian. Call, dude, call my. My phone's in the office. Call, call, go, grab me my phone and then call it. <laughs> Watch this. This is great. Do you, what, do you have it like turned off? You'll see. <laughs> just, just, just wait. This see, see, Chris, is, Christian thought he was just going to be behind the scenes. He didn't realize it's all. Dude, this is my father, when he heard this, it pissed him off so bad. Or like my, like, um, uh, who is it? Oh, here. So, okay. So, so the people at the gate of my, because I have a private gated community, you yeah. have to be called in. So the lady there hates me because I never answer the phone and she has to hear this message every single time. She like hates me. So, but, um, Oh, so do we need Christian? If come you're up? watching, um, <laughs> do we need Christian come up and put it on speaker when he calls? Okay. So he's calling, right? Okay. Oh no. You, yeah. You, you come up. Here, oh Christian. shit. Okay. okay. Why did I think I was going to hear my own voice? Now? <laughs> Call it again. And then just here, here, give me your, <laughs> we need your phone now, Christian. <laughs> here, call me, call it thought on speaker. Call my phone and then yeah. All right, so check it out.
Lost my mic condom. <laughs> I'll put it on there then. Jesus, how many times is it? Really? See, I don't use my phone that much. Decline. <laughs> I don't even use my phone. Please leave your message for eight one. Whoa, whoa. Ah! <laughs> la, 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 la. Where did my? Oh, it's because I switched carriers. It, it deleted my damn voicemail. That sucks. I just realized. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. All right. That, that's right. hysterical. All right, so let me just I'll, I'll just so we went into full scramble mode so we didn't get the yeah, the so let me number out. hold on, hold on. All right, so th this is damn this mic bullshit. <laughs> so this is what it says. Um, it says, Hi, you've reached Dan Henry, CEO of getclients.com. Uh, I do not answer this phone, I do not accept text messages, I do not accept voicemails. If you leave a voicemail, it will not be returned. If you this phone number is only for family and close friends. If you do business with me, you are my doctor, you are my lawyer, blah, blah, blah. Please email my assistant, Alice, and I give her email. Right. That is the only way to get a hold of me. She will then tell me if I need to get a hold of you and then end. And I do not answer voicemails, nothing. So what do they do at the gate then? Bitch about me. <laughs> no, well, I have a list, right? You go. You, you, go you have on, a list of people at the yeah, gate. That can and get it, yeah, and or, well, like. So sometimes they just don't let them in if I don't answer. Or, or they, they, they call Alice now. Alice, um, can you approve this person? Is Dan okay with this? And she has to say yes or no. Uh, yeah, yeah. She Pretty handles much. it for me. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like. So you really do like hardcore. You, you go completely silent then when you're focused. Well, yeah. Everything's off. How do you stay focused? No, but, <laughs> no I agree with you. I'm saying most people don't though. Well, like they'll still, they're they still have up. notifications for your emails. You still have notifications for. Because they're fucked up. You got to get unfucked up. Yeah. I help people. It's get, a mindset of, of well, fixing what is. That, yeah. So we have like a one hour productivity training at the beginning of sold out courses. Okay. And basically I make you delete a bunch of shit from your phone. I make you install a bunch of apps that are not apps, but Chrome extensions. Like that doesn't allow you to see recommended videos. Um, you can get uh, a sleep. Actually, you can get a sleep cycle app or you can get this uh, Aura Ring. Uh, Sam told me is that. that. that yeah. is, I've seen these. People have been wearing them. Yeah, Sam you told like me them? about that. I, I, yeah, it, it shows your, your sleep data, sleep. Um, all that. And then I also encourage you not to eat certain things. I encourage you to work out, go to the gym because you're going to be more productive. If you so it really, it really is way, way, way more than just a training on courses. It, it, it really is like what you're saying. How it's many, how it's many, like a mindset and lifestyle shift. Yeah. To be able to run a knowledge business. Yeah, because you, 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 you can't be eating fucking like shit food and hot dogs and drinking cola. So you mean and, I got to give up my coffee and my... And my no, coffee... Well, coffee in moderation is fine, but like... You define moderation? Four, five cups? Um, you know, if I drink that much, it fucks my stomach up and then I'm on just the shit well, and I can't then, run my Then you have a whole different distraction because then you're just... Unless you're running with your laptop back and forth. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, you, you have to be, you have to feel, if you don't feel good, you don't perform good, right? right. And so how the hell are you going to run a business of any kind? You just can't. And I don't give a shit what anyone says. Unless you're a trust fund baby, you're, you're going to have to maintain health and to do this. Like, yeah. you, like I'm, I'm sorry. It's huge. It, it, you can't it, be getting drunk all the time. I used to right. get drunk all the time, and it fucked my business up because I was never focused. I've noticed you don't drink that much anymore. You still drink, but you don't drink that much. Mm -mm. No. Interesting. No. There's other ways. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's other things you could do to take the edge off. No, no. But, but, but there is a certain time that you have to be able to allow yourself time to decompress. Yeah. So what I do to decompress is I will watch um, like Marvel movies or like okay. South Park or Family Guy. Just I, I like to watch something so stupid and basic that – it allows me to forget about complicated things. Okay, so here's what I really want to know because we talked about this. With that statement, how many times have you watched the Batman series start to finish? Which one? Excellent question. You can tell I'm not a Batman. The Christopher not. Nolan ones, the I'll say DC Extended Universe. No, the, the newer ones, the ones that 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 kind of got made popular in, in, over the last probably five years, ten so, years. So, Christian Bale versions. Oh God, um, fuck a lot. Um, <laughs> and by the way, we talked about this. So for anybody watching, right, this is not an act. It's not a show. Mm. The dude literally loves Batman. I walked in and his Wi-Fi said Batman 11th floor. Yeah. 
and then don't don't say the I won't say the password, password. Say but it. it was a character from but it was, Batman. Yeah, I named my son Bruce. <laughs> I have a actually Russell Brunson sent me. A, I saw the Batman suit. Yeah, he sent me a Batman suit. I should I should have um, coordinated. My Lamborghini is is, is, uh, is coordinated. Coordinated so it looked like the Batmobile. Batmobile. Yeah. Um. There's other shit. So you, so gen, it was genuine. I, I was surprised. I don't make shit up. No, but you see, like <laughs> I'm way too I'm extra kid. to make this up. But see, see, I'm I, I have I'm a big kid in certain areas as well. Oh yeah, I am too. Like some of my downtime, I'll go find a video game. I so I tried that actually. This funny story. We I bought a PS4, installed it in my house, okay. right? And I'm thinking, oh, I'll play video games maybe to to decompress that shit made me more stressed out like i don't know what happened to video games like you used to just be able to turn on the video game and shoot some fucking zombies now you gotta like all this story bullshit you gotta go find shit what what did i buy about resident evil 2 they gave me like six bullets there's all these zombies i gotta go find shit hey, like I'll i don't want to do that Re resident evil will stress you out <laughs> well i like resident evil 4 resident evil 4 is great you as soon as you start the game you have a gun and there's a zombie you shoot the zombie i'm like all right yay <laughs> this other shit nowadays like storylines i don't want to see a storyline just let me shoot something you know? fair enough fair enough damn but no that, yeah so I, I get the decompressed part but I, I think just think it's a funny point that like people people don't realize like just because you're in business doesn't mean you have to grow up totally that's why I went into business, so I didn't have to grow up. I don't have to wear. I mean, look, we're in jeans and jeans Dude, and t-shirts here. You should see here. what we wear in the office sometimes. Like well, hey, I dress, all these look, lawyers and shit. In look, here, I dressed up like, for Who you. Who the here. fuck are these people? I put on pants. I dressed up for you. Oh, okay, well, good, good. Usually, I'm just running around in basketball shorts. Yeah, I've come in and and I know what, Christian. What do I normally come in and like? Sandals. Oh, basketball. Yeah, I don't sandals get basketball shorts unless and, I'm and shooting. If I'm shooting, right? Because people are super judgmental. Well, if you're shooting, if you're shooting from the waist up, I'm only wearing this. For you because you're so superficially judgmental and we both know it <laughs> <laughs> but uh um no people are yeah but i mean that's the thing you gotta appeal to the market like i had one guy buy my course one time or, no i think he bought sold out courses he's like you know why i bought sold out courses finally i was like why he's like because i started seeing you dressing in suits wearing a rolex you know no and i could just relate more I was oh like, whatever, dude. You just so basically what you did was you just completely and he ended up making a shit ton of money. I said, so basically what you did, I came back. I said, so basically you waited all that time. You wasted all that time. You could have been making money because you didn't like the fact that all I, because you were judgmental. I was wearing a dead yeah because you were judgmentally. Right. I was wearing a Deadpool shirt before. And now I'm all bougie. Like, come on. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't like the fact that I just I only had on a Batman T-shirt or yeah, Deadpool or I was shirt. Batman yeah. T-shirt. Right. Yeah, normally Batman, but I had some Deadpool shirts because um, you know Deadpool actually has a identity complex where he thinks he's Batman sometimes. Did you yes, know that? Yes, yes, I did know that. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> sorry. I, can, uh, I do, I love it. I love the tangents we run on in these shows. Oh, if you want to talk about comic books, you think I know a lot about marketing? I don't know about comic books. Oh, fuck, I could, yeah. I, I know movies, that's it, when it comes to mar the, some of the movies. No, I'm that. more, in, well, I'm more into the movie stuff. Fair enough. Yeah, but like, because I haven't read all the comics, but I know a lot about like. So it's been out long enough. I'll get this take. This is completely unplanned. Endgame, yes, no. Did you like it? I liked it. How did you feel the wrap up of all the stories on this, um, on this wonderful business show? We're going to take a moment. <laughs> well, I, I mean, okay. So obviously spoiler alert for any of you fans, if you haven't seen it by now, then though, you're not a fan. So if you haven't seen it by now, fine. you're not a fan. I don't feel um, guilty giving yeah. you spoilers. So I would say, I mean, killing Tony Stark was tear. Huh? Tear. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it sucks. Cause you want to keep watching. Cause he's like, cause you, it's kind of confirmation that it's coming to an end. You're like, yeah. nah. Well, it's not because they have phase four now. Right, but I do mean, what I mean? Like, you, you're used to Avengers being. Okay, it's, so, it's so I Iron thought Man, the movie was Captain great, America. Yeah. but I would say to be critical, um, if I had to be critical, I would say I would have liked to see more of a development of Professor Hulk, um, Scar, uh, or, um, killing off uh, Black Widow. Who doesn't like Scarlett Johansson? Like, come on. The little sassy remarks? Yes, it's fun. I mean, I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked it. It's it just good. sad. Now you want to talk what I'm disappointed in. We can talk about the Game of Thrones finale. That shit. Okay, you're I'm blowing fucking mind. terrible. I'm one of the strange people. I've never seen Game of Thrones. Really? Ever. Well, don't. It's not worth it. It's like getting all worked up. That's, I, I've it's like heard going to a strip people. club. You get all worked up and no finish. Okay, like, <laughs> like that's what it is. Like you get all worked up for eight seasons and you're like, what's gonna happen? Who's gonna get the Iron Throne? How's this gonna go down? Oh, uh, uh, and then you. Just, 
blue balls. Like everybody I've terrible. heard, they say it's absolutely, it was absolutely terrible. the worst. And okay. it, why it was terrible was because it was so good up until that point. <laughs> like it's just uh, no, fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so I digress. So we're going to back to we'll get back on on, on back to yeah we'll get back on target here. Um, all right. So I, I don't want you to too much chew too much of your time. So what's the best way if someone is is, is they're thinking of, of doing a course. They're thinking of, of doing getting into the knowledge business. Obviously, they may need a little bit more of a nudge. They may not be ready to jump directly into SOC and say, let me buy right now. Because some people, they just have that complex. I'm not saying it's right, but they have that complex. I can't fix that. Right. What's the best way for them to start following you, start getting? I mean, the thing about it is, is, you know, I've, I've moved from messaging that is, because everybody out there is saying the same thing. Um, it's easy. I'll just give you this simple blueprint, blah, blah, blah. You can do it. Here's the thing. If you're not willing to invest in your business, I don't even know if I want to work with you because I'm like, I really don't. Fair point. Cause like what kind of person doesn't invest in their business? Yeah. It's a similar mentality. Like from my side on the agency side, if I've got clients who are fighting me over yeah, so I, I don't, really I don't know want those that clients. I care to convince people. Fair enough. You know, but the thing about it is, is I mean, obviously you can follow me. I, I would say watch my webinar. I'm not a big fan of putting out tons of shitty content. I'd rather put out one piece of content that's good. So like, for instance, if you go soldoutcourses.com, you can watch the training that I show you. And the thing is, you just decide if it's for you or not. You. And, and the difference between that and a normal course is this most courses or, or even coaching programs, they give you the system or the blueprint, right? I do that too. I give you a great system, a great blueprint. I mean, every day we have testimonials coming out. We had a guy that hit uh, 50 grand right. his first I mean, month. I, I mean, I know some of the people that are, that have, that have signed up for course, of money. and the they fucking shit works very highly. We don't, yeah. we, do, we don't need to go into that. It works. Right. Period. Okay. Like my students make tons of money. Uh, fucking Andy made 32 grand on his beta. Like nice before you ever, I mean, it works. Yeah. I'm not even going to bother going into that. The thing about it is, is there's a difference between giving someone a blueprint and then giving someone a blueprint and making them good at it. Yeah. That's where I, I'm a big believer in getting good at things and not just learning things. I'll give you an example. I do jujitsu, right? right. Lo I love jujitsu. I would go to class and I always struggled with a gu uh, guillotine choke. Mm -hmm. And every class they would, w whenever they went over it, I would get it and I'd try it. But when I went in and actually tried to, like I would follow the steps. I'd you follow, mean executing a guillotine? Yeah, 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 executing. Okay. See, that's the thing. Not, is, not getting out of one, you're talking about executing. Uh, yeah, executing. So the problem was I would do it and I would never be able to finish it. People would not tap. And one day I broke down, I, I hired my instructor to do a private session, which was right. like $150 an hour. And as soon as he's like, well, I told him the problem. I said, I can't finish a guillotine. So he says, well, put, put somebody in a guillotine. So I did it. He goes, oh, here's the problem. And it literally was like an inch difference. I was doing this when I was supposed to be doing this. You were catching here so I was versus being able to get in. Instead, I should have been pulling up and in and then taking this elbow and pointing it at an angle like this and that's what finishes it better right because it's getting forearm versus getting here and getting the two pinch points yeah, and, yeah. But, but 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 it's such a small detail it is and and it's execution right the thing is you can sell somebody a course and a system but can you get them fucking good at it right like like one right. like one lesson in there we talk about getting good on camera like here, here's my thing stop this whole well here's how to do this thing even if you're not good on camera why don't you just fucking get good on camera why don't yeah. you just stop being fucking people don't realize a lot of stuff like that is really just a mindset of saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to get on camera. Yeah. I have to All do right, it. So to I'm going to bite the bullet and just do it. You want me to teach you how to get good on camera right now? Let's Here's what you do. So most people that they're not good on camera because they don't feel comfortable. If they felt comfortable, they would be good on camera, right? right? Because how many people would do crazy things on camera that they feel uncomfortable, right? right yeah, like, like, so what you do, what I did was I would watch movies with actors that were known for overacting. Adam Sandler, uh, 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 Jim pretty, Carrey. Pretty much any comedian. 
Yeah, but <laughs> specifically somebody that overdoes it. Right. And I would try to do impressions. And what I would do is I would – so I started, and I was like, somebody stop me. And it was, like, all awkward and shit. Yeah. Um, but eventually I got better at it, and then I started doing it to my friends. And I'd be like, somebody stop me. You know, and eventually – you get, uh, you get better and better at right. it. Right. And when I started noticing people would laugh or people, whatever, and it wasn't even if I was, the point of being good at it is irrelevant. It's the point of being able to put yourself out there and do it. Gotcha. Right. And so it's, 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 once you go on camera, you're obviously not going to be acting like Jim Carrey. But if you can go to your group of friends and act like Jim Carrey, then you can say, hey, would you like to register for my webinar? Right. So first you got to get comfortable. You get comfortable. It's, it's a matter of getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. And then you have to, uh, then you have to, uh, work with timing and inflection. Okay. So that's another thing I teach timing and inflection. There's a difference between lost my pillow. There's a difference between, Hey everyone, I'd like you to click the link below and register for my webinar. Okay. That's monotone. There's really no rhythm. There's really no inflection. Then there, then if you add rhythm, you say, Hey, everyone, I'd like you to take a moment, click the link below, and register for my webinar. Now we've added rhythm. So now you've added rhythm, but right. you're still monotone. So now we right. have to add inflection. Hey, everyone, what I want you to do is I want you to click the link below, click it, go to the page, enter your name and email, and I will send you the training right over. What, and when you do that, what happens is it makes the person watching it, it stimulates their brain up and down so that they, they pay attention. Right. Okay. And because people, you know, in the 1970s, we had a, a average attention span of 12 minutes. Today, we have an average attention span of nine seconds, right? So you, ha you have to like That's be like crazy. a dancing monkey for people, right? right. So you can't just be like, for, for instance, in, in ads, right? You need to capture attention right away. Big issue I see with everybody's ads, everybody's ads. The beginning, they're saying, hey, everybody, my name is Dan Henry. And um, I'm just so excited to be in this beautiful office. Everything's going great in my life. I used to be broke. And we're like 10 seconds in. I haven't made my fucking point of what you're going to learn from this video. Right. But if I say, hey, everybody, my name's Dan Henry. And I want to show you how I got this super bougie office, even though a few years ago I was in my bedroom broke. Or, you wanna, or, or if you want to get more specific or what I call in the weeds, you could say, uh, hey, this is Dan Henry from GetClients.com. You see these local businesses down here? What if I could teach you how to make a six-figure income from these local businesses? So I've made a promise, right? I've right. captured, a, like, this is what you're going to get out of the next, you know, 120 seconds of your right. time. You've, okay? you've given them a reason to say, okay, the next 120 seconds are worth me actually watching. Right, but if you're just like, oh, blah, blah, you're vague. Right. Right, so, like, let's say you're you're going to speakers. Like, you wouldn't want to start the video out, like, if you're marketing to speakers, you wouldn't want to start the video out going, you know, I used to be broke and blah, 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 blah. You, you'd want to say immediately, you want to say, I remember the day I landed my first five-figure speaking gig. Because now speakers. Anyone who's interested in speaking, you've just caught their attention. Like, right. Wait a minute, five figures. You mean I can or, make or 10 if grand? I, said, I, I remember the first time I had stage fright speaking on stage. You wouldn't say, I've made millions of dollars and I have a huge penis and all these things. Oh, by the way, I'm a speaker, like 30 seconds later. Now let me show you how to become a good speaker. Yeah. Right. Because right, people right. are like, well, who the fuck is this guy? What is he talking about? Why do I give a shit? But if, like, for instance, let's say, um, so e I don't sell e-commerce courses, but e-commerce people have it super easy. They can be like, do you know I sold 10,000 of these coffee cups last week, even though in I only made, like, you know, 10% profit margins, but I'm going to act like I'm rich. Um, da -da -da -da, you know, and right. they can hold. Uh, you have um, an item that you can actually can hold catch item attention up. to, right? Right. So, like for instance, um, let me give you another example. Um, so, okay, so we had a cowbell. Um, I, I speak at. I was speaking at uh, Dana Derrick's event, and he had a cowbell, and because I, I teach this thing where you can use objects to create ads. So he had okay. a cowbell, and so I said, "All right," he said, "Can you create an ad from a cowbell?" I said. Um, all right, well, what's the reason for um, – What problem am I solving? Like, like what problem does a cow, cowbell solve? And I think they said – I don't remember, honestly. I think they said it was like to ward off um, – I think it was like to – Ward off predators or something? So, I think it was something like that. I don't remember. Okay. But it was something like that. And so I said, um, why uh, – like what can you learn from a cowbell about building a profitable online business, right? Or I could say – I could bring the cowbell, so it's like a pattern interrupt, and I could be like, 
do you know that there's no difference between this cowbell and selling a profitable online course? You see, why were cowbells invented? They were invented, and I don't even know if this is true or not, but they were invented to ward off predators. Right. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not going to start my course. I'm not going to start my business because there's just so much competition out there. How am I going to compete with other you know, other predators, other people right. in my market? And you see, the truth is it can be as simple as understanding a cowbell, all right? A cowbell rings, you hear it, you know, it's a very unique sound, right? Mm -hmm. You know a cowbell. Well, it's kind of like you. You see, a lot of people, they're intimidated by the big gurus. Yeah. They're intimidated by them. But you, you're unique, right? There's someone out there that resonates with you. There's someone out there that will trust you before they'll trust someone else. I'll give you an example. When I first started coaching, I thought, I never can coach. I'm not going to coach. One of my friends saw what I was doing. He said, Dan, I want to pay you to show me what you're doing. I said, well, why would you pay me when you can pay somebody else? When you can pay somebody else bigger? He said, because I know and trust you. And that's when I realized that it's not about how big you are, how much credibility you have. It's about if someone knows and trusts you, okay? And you, you, you get trust and you get known by simply being unique, by being yourself, right? You can sell the same thing. Why does a car salesman sell a car that with an, you know, why are there, right. why isn't there only one car salesman in the whole world, right? Or in one city? Sometimes you just relate to people more. Like for instance, there's um, uh, uh, people I know that literally, like for instance, uh, Julie, right? Yeah. Well, most of her uh, uh, clientele is women. Right. Because she's always talking about women's issues. People connect to her. Right. Like it's a unique thing, right? Like me, like people like my no bullshit attitude. Right. Now somebody who's super snowflake is not going to like that. Somebody but I think the, the key with that though is people think that, oh, well, I can just go on social media or I can go on whatever my ads and be myself. And it's, it is that, but it's not you that. You must strategically you're also be You're also very good at telling a story. You're very good at being able to, like, for example, use the cowbell, right? Mm -hmm. You're very good at being able to. I don't think that was the story I told. I think I, think I uh, no, but I mean, the, the, the angle I went from, with it was if you create a great product, that's the best way to ward off predators. Right, but, but still, my point being is, like, you, you've gotten very good at telling a story and tying things together from point A to point B and allowing people to, one, they connect, two, they can see themselves down the road, and if you, you can kind of give them a vision of where I can go with it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that people miss. It's not just being, hey, who well, is, don't all work. this is you, who you gotta, I am. you got to test things. Like, I, I've had But I'm just saying there yeah. has to be intent behind it. It's not just, sure. hey, this is who I am. I'm good at marketing. Let me help you. It's so, let me tell a story that connects that people can resonate right. with. Right. So, okay. Have you ever heard of hook story offer? Yes. Yeah, I think it's bullshit. Okay. I hate, I hate hook story offer. How come? Because it, it it's just crap. It's just like, just fucking regurgitate it's white bread it's oatmeal with no fucking cinnamon it's instant oatmeal with no fucking cinnamon oh let me give you let me grab your attention then let me tell you this bullshit story and then let me give you this offer it's the oldest trick in the book it's garbage i believe in hook value offer okay okay hook you actually give a specific value for instance uh one of the methods i teach for ads is called teach step two okay so um, imagine if you solve someone's problem that they didn't have yet, but you made them feel like that problem is solved, right. but they still need to solve step one. So what I do is I do an That's ad. Smart. It's yeah. like a 10 minute ad. I fully solve step two. And then I say, Hey, now that you know what to do with step two, you still need step one solved. So register for my webinar. So for instance, for my agency course, I did this whole 10 minute ad and people thought I was crazy. Like other marketers like, well, 10 minute ad with no call to action until the very end. Are you fucking nuts? I said, yeah, well, we'll just watch. So I did a 10 minute video. I, sh I said, here's how to get more results. Mm -hmm. I said, hey everybody, this is Dan Henry from getclients.com. Here is how to get more results for your existing clients. Hook. And then I went into this whole thing about how to set it up where they get, you right. know, reminders and all this stuff. Like, straight value, not a fucking story. Straight right. value. You're legit given value. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can, give value in a story format right it, you know if that story is valuable but it doesn't have to be right so you you do that and then at the end i said well so so now that you know how to service your existing clients better you might be saying well dan how do i get clients well i'd like you to go register for my wherever i'm going to show you exactly how i and then i pitch so hook value because there's too many people out there doing this hook story offer bullshit and it's just crap right yeah like even the cowbell thing like i was show i was showing you that you know i was telling i and i did tell a story but i showed you that some people 
legitimately are intimidated by big gurus. And if right. they relate to you and they know and trust you, they will buy from you before they, they will buy from Tony Robbins or this, whatever, right? Like how many, how, how come everybody that, how come there are personal development coaches that are essentially never heard of, but they make six and seven figures because they've done something that makes that person bought from them relate to them right. and like, and trust them more than what, well, like, why doesn't everybody just go to Tony Robbins? Because everybody can connect with Tony. Right. There's other people that have similar, yeah. whether it's a similar background, whether it's what they've solved a specific problem that you have, even if you don't relate anywhere else. Right. So it's, it's all about connection. Thing, people, oh, well, there's so many other people out there that right. are teaching what I teach. How can I, blah, blah. well, yeah, but that means there's a market for it. Right. And there, and, and if you're unique and people like you and, and they trust you and you've shown them that you can solve some of their problems, mm -hmm. they're going to buy from you. So you just have to learn how to do that. But the idea that you can't do it because other people do it and they're, yeah. and they're not, you're not the top in your industries. All right. So I'm going to flip one more thing to you. Cause I know we're running short on time. You don't, you don't do much on social, social media from the standpoint of the traditional, what people think of as connecting to my audience. Like I'm not doing a lot of just straight connection, relationship building posts. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> what I mean is like, okay, for example, most everything that you post on social media, at least in the stuff I see, whether it's your Instagram or the ads we see on Facebook, stuff like that, everything that you post, you're, you're very much a, a better way to say it, you're a one, you're a one ad close guy. Um, it seems like. Does well, that make sense? I mean, I focus on ads because that's how I've made. But no, but you get know what I'm saying? As opposed to you have a lot of people, they'll, they'll go out and they're just giving lots and lots of value in social media posts and just building rapport, 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 rapport. Whereas a lot of your stuff, you'll do that. But it seems like it seems like and correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. It seems like a focus of yours is you've gotten very good at being a I'm able to connect like you just talked about in an ad, give them value. And I'm able to, to do the one ad close because I'm giving the value and everything with it. Am, yeah. I, am I mislabeling that? Well, so, OK, I do experiment with things like okay. I just hired this company to do my Instagram and they're posting a bunch of like motivational shit, which normally I'd be like, what the fuck is this? But it's working like I, we've got we've got like 5,000 followers in just a couple days, but I mean, I don't give a fuck about that. I care about right. ROI. So I'm going to do it for 30 days, see how it works. Um, it, you know, obviously I set up a system where it doesn't require sure. a ton of my time. Like we're going to pre-film story. We're going to, I'm going to give it a shot and we measure everything. We track everything. So I will know how much money I made from that. Um, I, I've, I've attempted to do the same thing with YouTube, but to be honest with you, like, like, I hate organic marketing. I fucking hate it because it's like, let me work my ass off for months. Well, again, that comes back to the other thing. All this like, shit to see if maybe it works, or right. I could run an ad and within like an hour know if it works or not. Like, why would you not just focus on getting good at ads? Well, that, that's what the I, that's fuck? my point. Like, like, do you think that's just something that because you're very good at ads that works, or is that do you think that's a concept that people need to rethink? Okay. Because yes, for example, it, you shut down okay. your private group that yeah. you had for years well, we because you're it, like, it, it just takes too much time. And I'm not making right. the, the ROI doesn't match. Right. The ROI you doesn't focus match. on, you're very focused on ROI driven things. Yeah. Well, you got to also understand a lot of my ads have value in them. So I can kind of combine those things, right? Right. Like I can run an ad that people love and that they get value from. And that builds my brand as a byproduct. So I get twice as much output. I yes, get those ads actually a lot of times convert into sales as well. Yeah, and, and we so we measured, um, we make six figures a month just in unaccounted, untracked sales, meaning people sharing, tagging people, not okay. directly targeted from the ads. Okay. Right? Because when you should, like, let's say I show an ad to you and I've targeted you. Right. You buy. It, it's going to track. But let's say you tag somebody. They see the ad. They buy. It will not track. Interesting. Okay. According to Facebook. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Um, it has to be served. So, uh, you know, it's a matter of so that's where you get that's where more of the because that's, that's what yeah, all that's i've what ever done that's worked the organic is sales ads. is not what you do a lot of that's a better well, way you, to say it I, I, so i, I think what you I get it from the ads fallout you get organic as a byproduct of running a lot of ads like for yeah. instance um i've tried i've tried to do the youtube channel thing like if i only focused on growing a youtube channel and i studied and i figured it out i'd probably have the biggest youtube channel there is but i don't have time to focus on that right so i might try a done for you company i might set time aside to right. whatever, but I, but like last month we spent a hundred grand on YouTube ads and that's easy. Yeah. Like, like ads, like the thing is 
you get your organic through ads. Is right. the biggest thing. Well, That's the, thing the more is, the like, gist, if you get good getting. at one thing, you can make it sing. Right. Right. I got good at ads. One of the so it is an unfair comparison. I'm one of the best in the world at ads, but I can also teach people how to get good at ads. Right. So the thing is, is why would I waste my time with organic marketing when I can run an ad? I can I, right now. I can shoot a fucking ad, and within a day, know if that ad is going to work. Mm -hmm. scale it, not scale it, turn it off, try something else. Right. Right. Whereas if I go, all right, I'm going to film six months of content and then I'm going to put it out there and then I'm going to blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to do this Gary V shit. You have no fucking clue if that's going to work. Now you just wasted so much time, so much effort. And About you're fucking, yeah. you're throwing shit against the wall and seeing if it's going to stick. Right. Okay. Now I'm not saying that, you can't build a profitable brand. You totally can. You can do that, test things, and over time, figure it out. But the reason I made so much damn money so fast and built this company so much is because I focused on one thing, paid ads. Right. Okay? And in a it makes sea, sense. And in a sea of people, you know how everybody says, oh, ads are getting harder. No, they're not. People are just getting lazier. Yeah. Well, I, I don't see any I, I anybody that actually knows ads, I haven't seen anyone that actually knows ads say that ad, say that ads are getting worse and stuff like yeah. I, I've never well, seen how are they getting worse. How? Like explain to me exactly so, oh Facebook CPMs are rising because um there's more competition. That's the dude that like just started a Facebook ads right. course, he's got like six clients, and he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound smart. CPMs are rising. Or he's somebody that's promoting a YouTube course. He's like, yeah, oh, having trouble on Facebook? Let's switch to YouTube. Like, no, it's just, you just suck well, no, at it. You hit it <laughs> on the head. That, that's what it is. Because the people who are running ads all the time, we're actually happy that they're making it. Dude, like, like I spend that, like. I'm I, glad that, that you can't have every single person just like throw up an ad and it run. I'm glad that you actually kind of have to know a little bit what you're doing. Well, for like local businesses, you really don't. That well, shit's that's, super easy. You can like still do a lot of that. Yeah. can do that. But for for coaching online courses, right? Um, yeah, you got to be good. More high ticket stuff. You actually have to know what you're doing. And you have to pay somebody to help you. Right. It doesn't have to be me, but damn it, it should be somebody. You know. Find somebody. I agree. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Um, Soldoutcourses.com. Yeah, you can watch the training at soldoutcourses.com, um, and just watch it and. It, I mean, you'll get value from it yeah, regardless. Yeah. There's some cool, like, if you got value from this, you'll get value from that. And, um, you know, it, you don't have to buy. You don't have to book a call because you'll watch it. And then if you like it, there's an opportunity to book a call and talk to my team. Um, you can always tell people about it. I'll appreciate that. But <laughs> I just want to work with people who have knowledge that can solve a problem or, or you know, that maybe they have done several things in their life and they're not sure what they should teach. I can help that. But I mean, if you don't know anything, if no one's ever asked you advice, if you if anything, you're not the advice giver, you're the always the advice seeker. You're probably, probably not ready not, for a course. Yeah, probably not ready for that. Um, and I'm not going to do this whole thing where I just pretend anybody can do it. No, you, you have you have to be an expert in something. Well, or provide value in something so that you can solve a problem. You we have to. So I, I, the word expert is, is tough because some people are experts in things and they don't realize. Fair right? point. Fair and point. They, they have this limiting belief. They have this imposter syndrome and they have so much value they can give the world. They, they have so many people they can help and they just don't realize it. So I don't like to say if you're not an expert because some people are experts and they just truly don't realize it. You definitely should watch my training about that. But if you literally, if you've never been asked for advice, if you've never given advice, right. if then you should watch my other training because my other training you can be a, any <laughs> asshole can make money with that training. Like that is for total beginners. Fair enough. And I, and we've had thousands and thousands of right. people that have hit six figures with it. I've made two, like I serve two markets. One market is beginners because everybody deserves to and be that's a 30 day agency. 30 day agency. You can go to just go to getclients.com for that. Everybody deserves to have a profitable business, right? Everybody. Right. And that's what that training is for. Okay. But for people that have knowledge that can solve a major problem, that they love to teach, they love to educate, they love to help. That's what this program is for. Yeah. Okay. It's harder, but it's also way more lucrative. Right. You I have a, a couple, well, no, I have probably like four people in my program that hit seven figures with the agency. Nice. Um, but most of them are at high six figures. I we have several um uh, the break points, yeah. I see for yeah, the awards there. There you go. So this, we, we send out several of these. Oh, I didn't know if you kept those over to throw at people and they get out unruly in the office. Yeah. 
So you get a you get a t-shirt. Actually, here's the t-shirt. You get a t-shirt too? Yeah. So this is how this works, right? So you hit 10 grand a month with with either program. But um, we've sent out hundreds of these. This is a 10K club shirt. You hit 10 grand a month. You get I've seen the, that a few times. Yeah, you get Dan Henry's 10K club shirt. This right here, we've sent out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. Um, and we've sent out several, several, several dozens, a ton of these 25K awards. Mm -hmm. A ton of people have hit 25K a month. And then a bunch of people as well have hit 50K a month. 50. Um, Leon Brown, uh, uh, like I think Andrew hit it, a uh, bunch of people. Nice. And then we have had um, a, nice, a nice handful of people uh, hit 100K a month. Nice. Um, well, the only actually, question I have is a few handfuls. Do you have because, insurance disclaimers on those? Um, don't run while carrying and stuff like that. Probably should in, in this <laughs> fucking day and age. But uh, I would probably say a good portion of the people that get this award are in sold out courses because obviously courses are more lucrative. More lucrative, yeah. But we do have several people in 30 day agency that hit this. Nice. Yeah. So that's, that's um, a big month for an agency. Well, you know, if especially you as you're as if, you're growing, if that's... you structure your agency correctly, that's not that difficult. Uh, so I believe one client, one exact client type. Like, don't take on multiple clients. Right. Take on like if you are the dentist guy, be the dentist guy. Be the... Don't be the dentist in the gym and the, be the niche down. Yeah, and don't call yourself. A, one more tip: Do not call yourself a Facebook ad agency. That's the worst thing you can call yourself. Call yourself a uh, dental um, marketing agency or a dental. Uh, growth agency right. because it facebook is the hammer right you can buy a different hammer and still build a house if in five years it's youtube ads and right. not facebook ads that are now popular, you have to rebrand yourself as something you to, totally but if different. you just don't do right. that from the beginning you you don't miss a beat whereas all the facebook ad agencies if you're x marketing agency now or x they're this, now right. they're all passe whereas you you're simply just you just bought a different hammer right you're yeah. still having the same client same branding everything else yep. well awesome man appreciate it brother this has been fun no problem. guys as always Another episode of Trent Talks in the books. Had a lot of fun with Dan. I love you guys. Till next time, we'll uh, catch y'all later.